Okay, thank you very much for um, giving the opportunity to share um, my thoughts on this uh, subject matter. And um, uh, it's good uh, interacting with um, the team of uh, electronics for you and what they do in uh, spreading the knowledge and awareness of these emerging technologies. Uh, I've been uh, associated with them for the past few years now. And uh, so aviation is all around us. Even when I speak, there is uh, helicopters flying over my head. So this subject matter is uh, very much to our um, context of India as a nation. Uh, India is uh, delayed by about a few decades of uh, the leadership in this position, but uh, coming few decades uh, scenario would be hopefully very positive. And uh, the aim of this talk is to inspire uh, some of the researchers and student community predominantly not really to be like a mentor for established uh, uh, giants in industry. It is just to, to inspire the youth. More focus is towards uh, educational content here. So with this few words, uh, let me go ahead. So basically India celebrates Engineers Day and uh, this talk was already delivered in recent uh, one of the engineering colleges. We work with a lot of colleges including IISC, IITs and other uh, national and uh, other engineering colleges uh, and we are very happy to know that a lot of work is going on even in the space of UAV. And uh, to give an example, India uh, being our focus, we, we are all most of us, the attendees are Indians, uh, we cannot be immune to the knowledge and awareness and uh, developments taking place worldwide. For instance, your Ola and Uber that you use, you depend on GPS. The GPS used not what you think is a, all that perfect and noble and generous to give you services uh, free of cost for you. They, it has certain mission. And uh, as a military officer retired, I know uh, one of the mission is to take care of the founders of that GPS satellites. GPS satellites are uh, total 24 satellites, which is an offshoot of uh, innovative thinking by likes of the science fiction writer like Isaac Asimov. And if you imagine uh, the sphere of Earth that is shown here in this visual, you imagine Euclid's carpets, uh, six carpets covering the planet Earth. Uh, you will get intersection of those carpets at 24 points. So they were able to launch 24 satellites. In fact, some of the more extra satellites to give them protection and value-added services. As it has been mentioned there, they hover around 20 kilometers, uh, 20,000 kilometers above surface of Earth and slightly inclined at a certain angle, 55 degrees. And their rotation will be 11 hours, 25 minutes. And uh, Earth would complete uh, by the time they make nearly uh, 11 laps or nearly 11 to 12th lap. Earth would have made one round around itself because 24 hours happened. So this is about the, the gamut of the uh, GPS that you are already familiar with, but maybe what you may not be that much aware of is certain uh, relation between the satellite networks and the terrestrial, non-terrestrial networks. So just uh, I would like to- Hi bring... everyone. I'm Dr. M. Rangaro, Professor in ACE. For this year, I'm going to tell you about the Malikarjuna College of Engineering and Technology with Avada. Today, I am going to give a demo on performance optimization UAV 5G SATCOM. The artificial satellite rotates in earth orbits. There are three types of earth orbits. The first one is geostationary, which is at 36,000 kilometers. The second one is medium earth orbit, which is at 20,000 kilometers. The third one is low earth orbit, which is at 2,000 kilometers. Weather and communication satellites are placed in geostationary orbit. Whereas the navigation and special satellites meant for monitoring a particular area are placed in Leo. Whereas scientific satellites are placed in Leo. One way of classifying orbits is by altitude. Low Earth orbits start just above the top of the atmosphere, while the geostationary orbit begin about one tenth of the way to the moon. The height of the orbit or distance between the satellite and the Earth's surface determine how quickly the satellites move around the Earth. An Earth orbiting satellite motion is mostly controlled by Earth's gravity. The main advantage of the 5G are greater speed in transmission, 
decrease the round trip delay, lower latency, fast response, beam forming, power efficiency, network slicing, IoT improvements. Satellite access in 5G, roaming between terrestrial and satellite networks, broadcast and multicast with satellite overlay, IoT with satellite network, temporary use of satellite component, optimal routing or steering over a satellite, satellite transborder service connectivity, global satellite overlay, indirect connection through a 5G satellite access network, 5G fixed backhaul between NOR and the 5G core, 5G moving platform backhaul, 5G premises. Most scientific satellites are placed in LEO at the height of 160 to 2000 kilometers. These satellites are launched by organizations like ISRO, NASA, etc. The orbit radius is around 8400 kilometers. Its velocity is 6.9 kilometers per second. Orbit period is 2 hours 7 minutes. Round trip delay is 133 millisecond. Actually, in the video uh, visual that you are going to see, Earth would look like static, but it is not. And uh, that's what we are highlighting here. It makes uh, in 24 hours. UAVs can play a vital role in 5G communication. UAV is placed at a height of 1 km from the Earth's surface. Apart from regular applications like weather forecast, disaster management, agricultural application, shipping and delivery, the UAS has an application in satellite 5G communication. The atmospheric satellites are often called atmosphere. This atmosphere is placed at a height of 20 km, which is very much below the LEO. This satellite will be launched with the helium balloons. As it is very much close to the Earth, its latency is very low. Data can be transferred at higher speeds. Round trip delay is less. The core link between UAV to atmospheric satellite and UAV to ground station is 5G. As I told, these atmospheric satellites are at 20 km high from the above ground surface. Its the orbit radius is 6400 km. Its velocity is 1.9 km per second. The orbit period is around 1 hour 25 minutes. And the round trip delay is 133 microseconds. In countries like India, Satellite infrastructure can also congestion in already overloaded networks. Actually, they can use to reduce congestion. The quality of service provided by mobile networks. They can be integrated into 5G systems and take advanced IoT applications to regions that are beyond the reach of terrestrial networks. The satellite systems provide good quality broadband internet technology in urban, semi urban, remote, and mountain regions. It can also provide on oceans and islands and even to those in sky. A constellation of about 150 satellites will be sufficient to cover most of the developing countries whose internet demand is growing rapidly. In business perspective, these satellites will offer higher penetration rates. Astrom, a startup at IIC Bangalore is planning accordingly. 17 Astrom's HDS, which acts as floating rotors, will orbit depth in the LEO. It is possible to provide 50 Mbps to home users and 400 Mbps for business users. ISRO worked with the Airport Authority of India to establish a Gagan, a space-based argumentation system for aircraft navigation using GPS. A regional navigation system, NAVIC, has also been established recently to provide an exclusive positioning and navigation system for India under its own control. With 5G and UAV could make its ADSB much more accurate and future release of UAVs would use a NAVIC for their support. Our proposal is integrating of 5G, UAV and Atmos satellite. The advantage of our proposal is decreasing the latency by using 5G in satellite communication in such a way to help in making several applications more effective. Using Atmos satellite, the round trip delay is reduced. Okay, I would like Thank to you for giving opportunity. I would like to decode some of the messages there. One is known as ADS-B. It stands for Autonomous Dependent Surveillance Broadcast Message. Uh, most of you who may have followed uh, MH370 disappearance, uh, aviation industry has done lot of um, um, corrective actions, and one of them is a um, uh, tactical collision avoidance systems and then this uh, disclosure of location, latitude, longitude and altitude and velocity details so that uh, we know where exactly is the flying object. So uh, ADSB is one such example which uh, it, it takes the help of satellites uh, to pass on the details of its locations. 
and uh, now coming to the research avenues for the UAV in India, it's a very particular context of India. We know that there is a WLAN Wi-Fi 456. Very luckily for uh, Indian uh, players, of course, there is a also a caution uh, that this may get very soon congested because WLAN is usually for the ground-based users. And that is another point is it is given for free and Troy has given it for free. So the telcos have to make a way how that can also be extended to the UAVs. And this is a work in progress. And the good news is that government has opened up these fringe areas of frequencies, keeping in view of stimulating more industries to come up, especially for 5G. Since we are um, uh, very clear that 5G and UAV have a lot of synergies, including the SATCOM, uh, this is very much important to realize that uh, when you make a product, make sure that all these advantages you leverage. And this is uh, this month's uh, Communication Society's uh, uh, Spectrum uh, document. And uh, you may not uh, read all the lines. I will uh, do some analysis uh, once the other slides come up. Just I want you to become IEEE ComSat members and that uh, that way you will have access to literature like this and uh, every month they generate this kind of documents allow you to attend international conferences such as what you are doing now itw so basically the fundamental question the uav industry is uh, trying to answer is is batteries the only panacea for us are, are we not uh, blessed with opportunity to use other forms of uh, uh, propulsion systems just like how aircraft industry started to do uh, they had uh, air traffic fuel and then uh, they had other variants now and they also there is a couple of pilots went around the world with uh, solar powered uh, small plane with a big, big wingspan to capture the solar energy and uh, so is that the battery only answer is something that industry is trying to answer it and lithium polymer happens to be currently the leader and there are lithium ion batteries and what has been explained in the those pages i went through it very clearly it is uh, one variant of lithium uh, and uh, sulfur and uh, during the discharge cycle the, it undergoes uh, transformation through electrolyte and chemical transformation goes to one form to another like li2s uh, s8 to li2s6 and li2s4 and li2s2 and Li, that is lithium and sulfur, sulfur combination. Uh, once you are recharging again, the reversal takes place. So that is the cycle of the lithium and the sulfur that has been explained in that technical paper. And so the, the, basically this is an example of uh, in a campus environment, they have taken this much voltage. Don't think that all the UAVs have to have this voltage. No, this is the academic report of uh, using lithium polymer in this particular voltage and for short duration activity means when you are doing for academic work you can't have six hour endurance of a uav maybe you are doing for 20 minutes sortie and that kind of applications this kind of batteries are okay for us so basically lithium and uh, sulfur they have already known uh, uh, industry deployments in fact uh, uh, like there is a taking a name of lithium there is a company uh, which uh, in uh, and by 2023 they want to come to market and they are the dominant players already in automotive and uh, they their concept is to use uh, lithium and uh, sulfur and the product name is called lithium and it is it would be kind of a car plus some other features they want to imbibe into that and so in fact the industry standard of lithium sulfides can give per kilogram of the material that you use so it has to pass through our uh, physical and chemical tests like this much of chemicals you are using 2500 watt hours it will give and it can generate also energy density proportionate to the uh, weight in terms of volumetric analysis and it is also come, supposed to be cost effective and uh, lithium ion liquids and lithium sulfide they share some of their production uh, synergies and this is a little bit on to the details of it so there is a anode and a cathode and a separation between anode cathode is an electrolyte and uh, there is that uh, uh, metallized thin film hybrid microelectronics. I did in defense labs uh, nickel chromium thin film uh, hybrid microelectronics on alumina substrate uh, nano, nanometer thickness and used it for the 
space applications DLR al Hyderabad. It was called lift off technology. We have done annealing technique and uh, we have done resistivity studies on that. So the word cell has tabs welded to. So basically, when you make a fab, you will have to metallize that. So copper and gold metallization, and here, as you see, there is some metallization here. And some studies done on lithium sulfide versus other things in terms of their performance of energy density versus uh, specific energy that you get. A little bit technical, and there's a paper around that uh, 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. So basically, the, uh, what we really need for a UAV industry is small form factors and its uh, performance should be good and it should help in also a, a UAV to do something like a regenerative braking, like uh, you know, if you want to really make a sudden turns at least to avoid collisions, uh, I think this should be able to help it. And uh, hybrid versions is something that the industry is looking at. Fuel cells is, uh, I know a lot of industry leaders, we work with them on a daily basis uh, before this talk and afterwards. And they are pioneers in the fuel cell research. They are inspired by IIT Mumbai. And uh, they are also talking about standardization. So we have solar power. Just I will show you some visuals of how NASA has used uh, solar for UAVs. And it's a high technology. And then the micro generators, micro turbines, and the super capacitors. In fact, there is SRM University Dean of uh, Research who is the expert in the supercapacitors. It is something similar to how uh, Tesla, Elon Musk, uh, has uh, started a truck and uh, from zero to certain speed in a shortest span of time. How do you prove that? That you require some supercapacitors for doing that. And they tested that capability even on the UAV. It was fantastic. So electronics and control technologies you require, like avionics and navigation electronics. Integration of all these technologies is the research scope. So I want to show there is one misnomer that newspapers have published about the gentle boy whom we all wanted to meet, uh, Mr. Pradeep, and they told that he made use of all the mixes and grinders and with which 600 different drones have flown, which is not possible. Basically, brushless DC motor is uh, there right from 1960s. That is what is used. Uh, most of the mixes and grinders you use, they are different versions. They cannot uh, be utilized for this purpose. Technically, it's not possible. And so, uh, just to, to highlight that uh, some uh, kind of a, uh, wrong messages are going on in the internet about uh, this kind of technologies. So basically, this is called Sion uh, power. You can uh, go more into the details. And we have uh, our academic uh, friends in uh, uh, reachable to you. If, you. if any student wants to do one year uh, internship or uh, also do uh, job like things and also do maybe their master's thesis, uh, you don't get, get, get back to us. Maybe you write to EFY. So basically, uh, this uh, brushless DC is good and there are good uh, positives and negatives also. Now I want to further come to some more things that uh, that the video that you have seen Dr. Ranga speaking uh, that talks about Department of Space, uh, Space and ISRO has also launched NAVIC and so NAVIC is something that we are insisting for the standardization for India. Every new uh, UAV that is made today, if you start manufacturing today, it has to have a NAVIC chipsets inside them period. No escape from that. You can't just say that I imported it, it doesn't support. Also, there are some other kind of criteria like NPNT, that is digital sky. Uh, no, no flying if there is no permission given. Permission will be given if they are qualifying uh, in terms of not tampering the firmware. So a lot of security measures we are adding and we are also adding how to test a drone. Let us say you pour water on a drone and see if it is leaking into the body or uh, let it fly in a bad weather. All these things are kind of a candidate uh, situation like wind tunnel and EMI, EMC. These are all things we are uh, studying seriously for making a standard for India. And so basically, how do you, this is taken from uh, DRDO's uh, Technology Development Fund. They have also given us the how the readiness is assessed. So if you start paperwork, you are at a basic technology research level. And once you finally launch and then show, show your product, you are at a TRL level 9. So many of the products that uh, DRDO, NEL, HL, 
have built they have already crossed these lines basically the concept of uavs in india there are three types one is completely imported and another is the partly imported partly assembled and uh, we are lucky to have a great leader of our uh, um, uh, aviation uh, joint secretary sri ambar dubey sir is uh, quite uh, inspiring to the youth in their work and pursuits and encourage them so idbm stands for indigenously designed and developed and manufactured uh, product that is what is atmanirbhar bharat are going um, vocal about being local and make in india and so we need uh, actually i am very happy to also see every day uh, youth uh, around the drone industry their age group is around less than 30 and they are uh, every day talking to policy makers very makes us feel very happy and uh, so for example drone federation of india we have smith shah and uh, and you will have a panel discussion by them today by 4:30 and deep kanakia and others and uh, so rustam 2 is uh, nearest performance technology demonstration that india has done and just like nasa or even spacex there will be a few hits and misses a uh, number of rustam still there one rustam fell uh, due to certain technical problem that has given ample uh, opportunity to learn and it is a internal matter of drdo so you don't get to know the report of the accident why it happened uh, air worthiness is the key for, uh, for going forward so this is the basic if you read if you attend this slide 19 and if you are busy you can leave so these are the nine uh, these are the personalities of uav that where you have opportunity to do research what are they you have to develop a robust uh, body the uav body and you can use 3d or add manufacturing what we call it you need to use design tools like uh, uh, unity or uh, solid works techniques and material research like what kind of is it carbon fiber or reinforced with certain aluminum inside or something you need to find out that particular aspect and uh, what should be the shape of that one is it a fixed wing or rotor or a flexibility that is all creativity of you not really to specify it has to look like what is a chinese imported uav not required and i on intellectual property you have to patent otherwise already air air taxis and boeings and air buses are they have already got uh, proof of concept of even uh, uh, um, uh, taking people on a sortie and that uh, experiments have been done in several parts of the world during this covid 19 days uh, uh, canadian cargo has also done a long distance uh, uh, flights with the cargo materials and that is equivalent of how aircrafts uh, carry the cargos so a lot of work is going on so the third personality is uh, you need to have the power system not single point of failure but a multiple power system or an integrated power source where if something fails you have a backup and if uh, that backup one may be doing some other job but when it is required it may relinquish its jobs and come to the important task that is pending so that the flight is not at stake and you also need a redundant communication system 2g 3g 4g 5g or maybe lora sigfox all that you know you keep them there or w wifi 2 and then make sure that it won't be crying for communication i mean if there is no communication it is like your kati patang your kite is cut off and it is collapsed somewhere they don't want that to happen then the telemetry also so multi layer wireless terrestrial and non terrestrial network coverage and the synergy between them navic provides you the opportunity to do guidance just like gps and gagan is gps driven but navic is uh, indian and uh, so it's just like gagan uh, indian isro will also perform uh, indian aviation with navic modus operandi very soon and uh, uavs can follow that and propulsion systems it is a power systems and battery as i mentioned several variants then uh, there is a inertial uh, measurement unit and lightweight black boxes parachutes in just like aircrafts have got a safety system uh, you also need to design eventually making your uav look like a small tiny aircraft and other safety is just like how you have in the regular aviation industry and then there is all these accessories camera payloads integrated user plane first person view and digital streaming of that So how do you put all the data into a cloud, a local or a international cloud? Uh, um, and that is what is another personality of the UAE, and that is where uh, AI, ML, big data will come into a big play. And uh, how do you do image processing, etc.? 
Next we have avionics, navigational electronics, flight controllers, ground control station and uh, eventually for autonomous flying you eliminate man in the loop not uh, visual line of sight or beyond visual line of sight actually there is no person required that is automatically taking decisions and there is a concept of UAV traffic management I made a mention about no, perf no flying when there is no permission and that is uh, stipulated by the government DGCA digital sky and all those elements that are required to make the digital sky work they are all work in progress in a couple of years they will take shape and Indian UAV is ready to launch. So then we also need to know how do you maintain your drone, what is the life cycle of every component of it, what is the mean time to repair, mean time between the failures and uh, in case a UAV behaves like a small child and uh, UAV wants to pay some money for its maintenance purposes to another UAV or another uh, system, uh, let us say UAV is tired, like a bird it rests on a treetop and it will call for help somebody goes repairs it, give, you pay money right when your tire is punctured for a car so it will use digi wallet autonomously and then perform the job and fly back again just like a bird and the resting time is known as perching and that is a subject uh, uh, widely published by scientific american research volumes these are the consideration for adopting drones in india so basically we need to have uh, a use case it means whether you are developing a uav for indian agricultural industry or for another use case you should know that clearly because every uav depends on the use case because there is no single uav for all purposes and also what is the output that is expected what is the data suppose you are using it for doing a video tracking or something how the file should look like can I, can I use any data analytics tools to make sense out of it what is the ratio in terms of the resolution whether it matches with the satellite images or it augments them and all these things you need to look from uh, before only around 18 months before uh, productization similarly you should know what are the deployment aspects who will pay for you is it a company that uses your drone or you yourself have to run operations all that you need to know clearly for making a viable business model and you should know there are government regulations you should comply to them and there are so many commercial technology import and uh, patenting issues procurement uh, regulations and international technology denials also and this is the thanks to ISRO they shall supplied it to us basically for the purpose of standardization and uh, you won't find it in uh, even Google and uh, after this talk maybe this will be available too so these are all the chipsets that uh, are available therefore anybody manufacturing uh, they can happily go use them therefore they will be compliant with the Navic uh, so they provide you support so all the big manufacturers of telecom like giants like Samsung, Ericsson, Nokia they already do because uh, Qualcomm is giving these chipsets so we have Qualcomm chipsets plus number of other companies and uh, so MediaTek also and uh, Broadcom also finally we require a system on the chip with 4G, 5G capabilities and multiple um, multi GNSS means not just Navic but all other companies uh, products also it should be able to receive signals from GPS made by Russians, Americans, Chinese etc. So basically when uh, you your car is on uh, road how do you get your Uber, Ola taking you to the destination it is because of the I mentioned about 24 satellites two or three satellites if you get a three-dimensional lock latitude altitude and uh, um, longitude then uh, you are there and combine that with the geo geographic information system then you know the destination where you need to go and there may be some corrections required so by triangulation the data coming from three different satellites you will fix the errors of judgment and this is something for avoiding collisions it is called LIDAR light uh, detection and ranging just like a radar and uh, IMU and camera so this will help in uh, two, two drones not colliding with each other or a drone can do autonomous uh, collision free uh, journey uh, through obstacles and avoid obstacles so sense and avoid detect and avoid purposes and uh, the zip line and uh, other uh, few players like um, uh, throttle aerospace uh, and uh, Dunjo etc and in America Amazon Prime and a number of others like a uh, universal parcel services they have been already delivering and for the medical purposes uh, it has been happening UK is supporting Mozambique and Rwanda 
for medical supplies even four or five years uh, before. And during this COVID, that has been uh, much more uh, actively used. So some of the UAVs just behave like an aircraft and they talk to normal ATCs just like uh, any other flight does. And they will also talk to other systems like ground-based satellite uh, receivers for telemetry and control purposes, C2 purposes. And there is a small uh, gadget, uh, like a video game. You will use it to control that. It's called ground control station for visual line of sight or beyond. And currently, the state of the art, uh, we are about to reach the beyond visual line of sight capabilities by the consortium, and government is uh, cooperating in that. And this is NASA's uh, solar powered uh, flying machine and autonomous, therefore, it is like UAV and uh, that uses maybe battery as well as other techniques. So it's called hybrid. So solar power plus battery and backup and all those things. And uh, this is uh, again a story of how India supported in the making of the UAVs is uh, around, I think a uh, billion dollar is already spent on UAVs in India by all the departments like government concerned, all the PSUs. So initially they helped in the making small UAVs uh, you may not find application in civil, but they have some uh, military applications uh, and may look like a mosquito, but it is doing something else and a small footprint. Uh, so this uh, you may not make a commercial sense out of them. But uh, if you talk to Department of Science and Technology and uh, DRDO, they might tell you what to do for any business case. And this is about the challenge. Government gave a story like, you know, youngsters are excited about the crime and then uh, terrorism. So there is a war-like situation, they have given a challenge and uh, youngsters are applying for this Startup India challenge and uh, this is how India is inspiring. And DRDO, as I said, there is an aerial uh, delivery research development establishment in uh, uh, Agra, Uttar Pradesh and India made Rastam series and Laksha, Nishant, Black Kite, Golden Hawk and Pushpak and lot more. And this is the website link where you can read more about micro mini air vehicles and what government can do to encourage you to build some models like this. This is developed by Jain University and uh, this is an article published by the giants of uh, consulting firms like uh, uh, EY and they are saying that India is at a moment where global industry faced uh, Kitty Hawk moment when the Wright brothers were experimenting on the real aeroplanes. So India is really doing a lot of research and we need to patent and take it forward. And so this is Digital Sky. You can read some locations like Nandyal, Andhra Pradesh, Tumkur, Karnataka, and Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal. These are the locations where for the purpose of the COVID um, conditional exemption is given for the government, uh, from the government for remotely piloted autonomous systems. And uh, this is a very good step by the government to inspire this industry to come up. And even for the 10th class people, I think plus two or 10th, 11th, you can download this book and give it to the youngsters in your homes. And this is uh, made by Atal Tinkering Labs. Uh, I'm also one of the, uh, um, I think I'm an Atal Tinkering uh, mentor of change. And this document is a gift from you, um, from us to the youngsters. And this is a book, uh, another book, uh, which is the audio has made. And uh, these are the UAVs that HL is making. And currently there are so many other private bodies like Tata Advanced uh, Assistance, Adani's, uh, Idea Forge, and uh, plenty of, at least 200 companies are interested in making these UAVs. And HL uh, made this uh, uh, altitude, medium altitude and high altitude long endurance, which is like 24 hours and beyond which are typically used for military applications. They can also be used for civil. And a private company can work with the giants like HAL and go take some support from them to get some components done because they already have the best practices. They're scattered across India. Therefore, you can leverage that so that uh, you can make your product. And these are the 10 points. And then I'll pass for question answers after that, even though there are other slides. So basically, our vision is by 2045, India has to be the world leader. Uh, we are actually less than 5% now. And uh, we also need to enter into services business of the UAVs and innovation and go global competitiveness by patenting and doing research aggressively. And autonomous UAV, air mobility, interoperability with aviation integrated. 
it means how does the uav industry work with the traditional uh, supply chain networks and the traditional flying systems of the regular domestic uh, airlines and also between the uav operators how do they coexist now, even though they compete with each other how do they communicate and coexist and uh, we need to have at least a lakh or number of uh, two lakh uh, drones are required as per um, uh, Sri Ambar Dubey for agriculture purposes in near future and we need actually lakhs and lakhs of sky ports and drone ports to make these drones to behave like our small cars that you see by Ubers and Olas like that in today's world. There is a new evolution of artificial intelligence and uh, like DevOps, AI Ops is coming up that can also perform a role in happening for the operational aspects of the UAVs, like the digital sky I mentioned, and the intelligent airspace monitoring so that there is no collision, and also it helps in civil defense and uh, even real defense applications and tracking, and the UTM, digital sky version 5.0. Right now we are in the 1.0 version, uh, maybe as time progresses it will evolve and collaborate with Department of Space and NASA in uh, many international missions such as uh, human space research happening uh, uh, with the 3000 um, uh, square feet area in uh, Chilikere near Karnataka where uh, space and uh, UAV uh, will be uh, DRDO organizations will initially use UAVs to simulate some conditions like space and uh, in fact NASA if you see 2100 or 2200 futuristic NASA missions they they use UAVs from a vehicle like thing and they come out of the vehicles see a roof and go do some job and then uh, release one uh, spider like object on the uh, another planet like object and it will collect data and then it will be giving back the information to you just like how Chandrayaan 2, Chandrayaan 3 they are planning to do and uh, research in engineering colleges uh, blended with internships and projects 